let you go, miss. It's quite beautiful, you know. The island. Hey, Mickey, what's going on? Jeff in Vegas. Hey, great to great to see you. Great to see you too, man. Thanks for joining me today. You're talking about your movie off season. Yeah, of course, of course. I'm super excited. Oh, first big, of all, great big thriller. fan of Vegas. <laughs> oh, really? Cool. I'm a fan of yours now, man. What a great thriller. So uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I enjoy it immensely. Um, well, your character Marie, she gets a letter about her mom's grave being disturbed, and she travels to an island where she's buried, and weird things start to happen. Who disturbs a grave? That's so morbid. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of, you know, one of the basic kind of human taboos, I feel like. And so I thought that would be a very kind of shocking and horrible, uh, uh, inciting incident. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love, uh, is that Melora Walters, you know, her opening monologue of the film, she nailed it, bro. I mean, she just nailed that and uh, accept your nightmares like an old friend. I mean, that just, and then that scream at the end, I just jumped out of my seat. Oh yeah, everyone did. That was the first take we did and literally everyone jumped and our sound guy was like, his, his uh, headphones were blown out. So we were all <laughs> terrified. So we had to use that in the movie. <laughs> you know, and Jocelyn Donahue, I, I loved her in Doctor Sleep. I recognized her right away, but I, here she gets to really spread her wings. I mean, she carries this entire film. I mean, she's, what a great choice. Yeah, I mean, she's amazing and she's a great, I just think she's a great actor. And this was really difficult because I said, look, like you're 99% of the movie. So I hope that's not, uh, you know, terrifying. And she really took it on and I think nailed it. You know, I just spoke to Richard Brake, you know, uh, for Bingo Hell a few months ago, you know, for the, for Blumhouse. And when I saw him in this, he's awesome, dude. He's just, a, it was he easy to get for this film. Um, well, I mean, I had to, uh, you know, I basically, I met him at Sundance and then I've always wanted to work with him since I saw him in, uh, Rob Zombie's 31, that opening monologue. And so I called him and I explained the story to him and, and he's just the sweetest guy. He plays the craziest characters, but he is just the nicest guy you'll ever meet. <laughs> he's a great, he's a great interview, but yeah, he plays just the most despicable evil character sometimes. And you're he like, where really does he find him. that? <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, as the writer also of the film, telling your story in chapters, does that benefit you as a writer? Uh, no, actually, you know, it's funny. I think every movie's different. And, you know, I really wanted this to be kind of like a love letter to like old Southern Gothic stories. So really that was just um, a funny a funny anchor point that we found along the way. And I was like, we have to use it. It has to be chapter marks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you've been Southern, uh, to dedicate to Southern Gothic stuff. I was, I wrote down the B Knox Bridge and I Googled it and it's near Marietta, Georgia. <laughs> oh, um, well, uh, maybe it's a different bridge. This is that one a different was, one? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> I, that's great. You know, the geography of, of this movie is supposed to be all over the place. So um, uh, this one was kind of in the middle of nowhere, Florida, near Daytona. So uh, multiple Beanox bridges. I guess so, because I'm like, how does it look like, you know, the, the scenes that you were shooting it didn't look like it was in the middle of Georgia. It just looked no, really no. bizarre. But... Who is the original? We got to find we got to find out who which ones which one was was put up first. And, you know, Mickey, you love mist, fog, rain. It dominates this entire movie. Look behind me. Uh, yeah. 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 I, I love uh, it. It's a great mood setter. I mean, I, I love how you and you don't overdo it. I love how you just like, you know, piecemeal it in there. Sometimes it's a lot of fog or sometimes it's just a little bit, but it just keeps this illusion, this dream state going. Yeah, it's, you know, it's inherently just very, you know, visually kind of captivating, but working with fog and fog machines is the worst thing ever. It's, you know, they say don't work with animals or children, but fog, I think, is way worse. Worse of the three. So I will not recommend it to anybody, but it looks great. Just around Halloween by the front door. That's about it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Where you have a semblance of control. <laughs> And you also love those extreme long shots. I notice on a beach or in a passageway, you just love to keep things in a distance. What's behind that? I really, it was an effort to kind of keep, uh, you know, the character at, you uh, feel like an outsider constantly and really not know what she's getting herself into. So it, any chance that I could get to kind of obscure or throw things off and not provide much detail, I think really helped with the confusing nature of, of this kind of story that she finds herself in. And you had a lot of mannequins in this movie. And I thought to myself, he's got to be a Twilight Zone fan. That's where it comes from, right? The biggest Twilight Zone fan. And this movie is totally, you know, the the, the episode Elegy, the pilot episode, Where Is Everybody? Uh, I just, I pray at the altar of Rod Serling. He's my favorite writer. And I love the original Twilight Zone. He's I got a good Twilight Zone vibe from this movie too. So I thank love you. It. That's a huge compliment. And also what was the scene in the in the bar? You know, were those, were those actors like, 
physically frozen or and like not move because I was trying to see something and I was like, it really fooled me. Yeah, no, they they nailed it. They did it all themselves. We did zero cleanup or any digital effects on that. They held still for, you know, two minutes and nobody blinked. It was really kind of insane to 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 think that, you know, you ask something of somebody like that and they all did it really well. I was very impressed. I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, yeah, me either. I was even kind of mimicking it. I'm like, how'd they do that? <laughs> you know, it's like, and, I mean, I was looking for a little shake or something. They just, I mean, it was brilliant. All of them was just really cool. Super talented. Yeah, I was very, very lucky uh, to have them all. And they did great. And, you know, of course, that wasn't a set somewhere. Where did you shoot this film? Because it looked like small town America and you had every passageway, every museum, everything. You just, it looks like you just use real locations. Yeah, for uh, a lot of it was. I mean, we shot in this town called New Smyrna Beach, Florida, and it is cut, it is up and coming in terms of tourists. So there's lots of condos around now, but we had to shoot around that. But the main street is a 1920s built main street. Everything that you see is practical. That museum is, you can actually visit that museum. Uh, and, and yeah, we got very, very lucky. The town really worked with us and let us kind of, you know, uh, take control of it for a second. It was really beautiful. And, and so off season's heading to Shutter. Yes, yeah, so it, it's out uh, in theaters and on VOD March 11th through RLJE and Shutter. It will it will be out uh, in a few months. Mickey, man, congratulations! What a great eye! I'm literally can't wait to see what you do next. So thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And come see us in Vegas, man. We're waiting for you. I will be there. I'm there all the time. <laughs> okay, hit me up, man. Let's have a drink. I got more questions for you. <laughs> for sure, that'd be great. Thank you so much. <laughs>